Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this Bible reading again today. As we get into this next video, get into God's Word and see what He has to tell us today. But I already know it's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. And we'll be a reading from 1 Peter and the first chapter. And I'm going, we're going to title this message or this lesson, What Are We Really Looking For? Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, it's again we come to you, Lord, with a thankful heart and thank you for another time. Jesus, you have given us to sit down and get into your word just a few minutes and see what you have to tell us today. And I pray, O oh Lord, that you anoint these lift the clay. Give us wisdom how to explain the word with your with understanding that would draw every one of us closer to you and give us a stronger desire to follow you. And I pray, O oh Lord, you pour out your spirit upon the listeners of this video and fill their heart with joy, knowing that they have been redeemed and saved and ready to go home in the morning when you call their name. And Lord, I pray you help, it, help us to draw closer to you and show that light road just a little bit more plainer that we may see how wonderful you are and know that we need to live closer to you today than we did yesterday. And also know that we are, all of us are nearing the end of our journey Although we don't know when it's going to come, we know it will come. But Lord, when that time comes, we'll be secure, standing steadfast in you, and we'll be able to hear you say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. These things we ask in the wonderful name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and amen. And thank you, Father, for your love and your mercy. First Peter, King James Version of the Bible. We will start at verse number one. And again, I'm going to title this, What Are We Looking For? Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bethany, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Aren't you glad how he introduced himself? Did he come or the other word? That he, he let people know that he was called of God and God was the one that made him a apostle. And we also must walk in the same way as they walked if we going to inherit eternal life. Now listen to what it says. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. You know, there's still many people out there in the world today don't really believe in the resurrection. But my t I tell you, my friend, if there hadn't been no resurrection, then we would all be lost. And if he hadn't been to died on the cross for our sins, we'd have always been lost. For because his death and burial and resurrection also brought resurrection for us, and we're already part of the first resurrection. Why? Because we in the Lord Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ was resurrected and came, came forth uh, from that tomb. We are part of the resurrection through the new birth and through His Holy Spirit that He gives to His children that believe on Him, that have really and truly been saved and been washed in that blood and trying to walk and follow Him according to to his word, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you 
Let me tell you, my friend, what are we really looking for? Are we looking for that inheritance, that faith that's undefiled and fadeth not away? But I tell you, my friend, if we're not looking for that, then we're looking for the wrong thing in all the wrong places. But I tell you, my friend, we don't, we can't dabble in the world and have the same desire to go to that, that life, that life which will be undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you for us that's been saved have places already reserved for us my friend if we have met the lord in a free pardon of sin if we have been forgiven if he we have been saved and his blood has been applied these old hearts of ours that he loved us enough that he's willing to do that and pay the Sin debt we owed and could not pay that he didn't owe, but he paid for us that we could be set free and that we could be his children who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, ready to be revealed when he comes to get his children. When, or when we go home to leave with him, then we'll see heaven. We'll see it. We'll know it as it is. Let me tell you, my friend, my friend, down here in this world, we don't have a thing in this world to have hope for or look forward to. But we do have uh, something to look forward to. If we've been saved, we have that heavenly home to look to, that eternal peace with God and His love over there in that city. John saw coming down where we will never have to suffer or die anymore. We'll never have to go up to a graveside of a loved one and tell them goodbye because it'll be good morning over there and to live evermore in their presence. But most of all, we'll be able to live, live in the presence of the Lord and Savior who died for us and made it possible for, our, for heaven to be our home. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, through, though now, for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness, through manful temptations. Everywhere you turn around and look today, there's some kind of temptation to catch a person's eye. But let me tell you, my friend, if we're living for the Lord Jesus Christ, we won't find it tempting. We'll find a lot of things down there that the devil has be disgusting instead of tempting. My friend, let's pray for that anointing to be on us every day, to walk in that spirit every day, that it will guide us by the things that we don't need to dabble in, that we don't have no business of being in or having part of. I know we have talked to sinners and we talk to people that's lost, but the Lord will provide and make a way. We don't have to deliberately walk out there in something and knowing he, that the devil is full of it. Because the Lord will make a way, because he said to not be to shun the very appearance of evil, and to shun it we can't get out there and devil in it. Other words, I ain't got no business to go into a bar where they're drinking and gambling, doing all this other thing. My my place is God's word in the ministry, sharing the gospel of the lost and dying world, not to get out there and dabble in things of the devil things that lead us astray and cause other people to go astray that's a sick in the lord let me tell you my friend the people we are witness to talking to many of them are watching us they're not saying anything but they're watching us seeing how we act away from the church house or from where we witness to them to see if we're any different out of their presence or in their presence and if we ain't no different than they are if we're doing the same thing it will kill our testimony and they'll say what good is he he ain't no better than we are who is he to tell us what to do or how to live seven that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes though it be tried with fire might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of jesus christ what we do should be to give god the glory and praise 
It shouldn't be to give praise to the world, but give God the praise and all the glory because he deserves it. He is the one that paid the ultimate price on the cross for us, and he deserves all the praise. He des uh, deserves all our glory. Let's not glorify things of the world, but let's glorify him through obedience, being obedient to him and listen to the call and be obedient to the call he placed on our hearts and lives to give this word out, to share this gospel to the lost and dying world, our friends, our children, our loved ones. And I know people go to foreign missions, foreign countries all the time for foreign missions. Let me tell you, my friend, we're foreign land right here in America to those that's turning a deaf ear to the word, those that don't want to hear, and to those that's never been taught. We're still entering into a foreign land, to a land. A lot of them don't want us there because it will reveal to them. It will convict their heart and let them know how wrong they are and where they need to be walking and who they need to be serving. It will remind them again that they need to be saved, that they need the Lord Jesus Christ in their life. Verse 8, Whom having not seen, ye love, in whom thou now ye see him not, yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. My friend, remain faithful. Be faithful to the Lord. A call. Be faithful to his word. And again, a question, a question will arise. What are we really seeking for? Are we seeking for the common glory? Are we seeking for worldly pleasures that would decay? But let me tell you, my friend, that heavenly treasure will never decay and it will never pass away. That's what we need to be laid up and stored in heaven and through the prayer, our prayers and our deeds are uh, helping those that are in need to see the light of the Lord Jesus Christ that they'll know they can find a way of escape all this corruption the troubles that are coming especially the trouble that will come at the end of this age my friend we're yearning close to that to his return even though we don't know the day and the hour our life is in his hand it could end any moment and when our life ends when he calls us away we've already made our, our ascension back to the father because the spirit goes back to the father that gave it ten of salvation now listen to this, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Again, what are we looking for today? What are we hoping for? What is our hope in? If we ain't got no hope in the Lord Jesus Christ, then we have no hope because the world don't have no hope. All it has is trouble and sorrow and misery, heartaches and pains and suffering. But God, the home and glory, the Lord, He has eternal life from all those that have been saved and that will be saved. 11. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the suffering of Christ and the glory that should follow, the glory that should follow after his resurrection, after his death. What was he talking about? That after his death we could be saved. He shed his blood on the Calvary's cross during that death that we could make be saved, that that blood could wash away every stain of sin that we had against us and make us a fit subject from heaven and be cast as far away from us as the east is from the west. My friend, what are we uh, looking for? Or what are we searching for? We're reading what we should and ought to be a seeking for and searching for. And we'll search and seek for the Lord Jesus Christ and His answer and His love and His mercy. Then we will find it. We will find Him. And we also find the way to eternal life with Him. Verse 12. 
but all the prophets and disciples, they searched diligently to find what was going to come to pass to those who accepted him as Lord and Savior. 11. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the suffering of Christ and the glory that should follow. 12. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which thing the angels desire to look into. My friend, if the angels of God desired to look into this great love he had for us, what's wrong with us that we can't look to the same thing? What are we, again, what are we really searching for? What are we looking for? I hope we're all looking for the good thing in the Lord Jesus Christ and our eternal salvation with Him. Then we are, then we're searching for the right thing. But anything other than the Lord Jesus Christ and that salvation is looking for the wrong thing. 13. Wherefore gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ when he comes back again. And what he said here, not be, and be sober, he said not be drunken with the cares and things of this life that will stand in our way of seeing how great and wonderful the Lord is and how much we need him and that he is our only hope. He is the one and only way to eternal life. Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ is the way. There's no other way under heaven whereby a man can be saved except through and by the Lord Jesus Christ. 14. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in, the ign in your ignorance, or not, not knowing, not your ig but ignorance of not knowing, hearing, having opportunity, and refusing, and not knowing. But as he which hath called you is holy, who called us? The Lord called us. It's holy. So be ye holy in all manner of conversation. I wonder today how many that would get on their toes off. We All of us have had talks and conversation we should have never had to begin with, but somehow we got into them. Therefore, this scripture will get on all toes. Why? Because we're all guilty. It reminds us all how that we have been, that we have talked and said things that never should have been said, but we did. But also we see that God will forgive us for all sins except blaspheming against the Holy Ghost. He will forgive us for saying things that we should not say if we go to Him and repent. My friends, there's not a one of us living today that does not need to repent daily. Why? Because we're still in the flesh. And as long as we live, sin is going to be in the flesh. Seventeen, and if you call on the Father, who without respect of person judges according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourn, here is fear. Realize and remember what he can do to us for rejecting him, for doing things contrary to him. He can cut our life short on this in this earth. He can lengthen our days, and he can also take us home to heaven, my friend, if we're obedient to him and follow him. And put him first in all things. And the fear is of knowing what he can do to us, how he can destroy both soul and body and hell if he chooses. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with the corruptible things 
as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. In other words, you were redeemed for, by, for money, for wealth. Your soul could not be bought. It can't be bought today. We cannot buy salvation. It's a freely, free gift from the Lord himself. When he saved us, he gave us that gift. That Holy Spirit, that saving grace, he saved us that day, and no man, no amount of money could buy and purchase that salvation. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, that what, what, that's how we became saved, not with money, not of silver and gold, but as... But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, he didn't have no blemish, he didn't have no spot, because he is pure and free from sin, he had never sinned. My friend today, that's what it takes to be pure enough to give you blood, that your blood can wash away sins, and his blood washed away every stain of sin and covered every sin and set us free, and make us a fit subject for heaven. Glory to his name. And like the song goes, glory to the name of God that redeemed, that saved, that sets the soul free, that one day, after a while, we can rejoice with him in the presence of all the holy angels and those that's gone on before us. Twenty who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last times for you. He was ordained before the found from before the foundation of the world to pay our sin debt in full to be our Savior. Twenty one. Who by him do believe in God? That raised him up from the dead. Jesus was raised up from the dead. The Father, God, raised him from the dead. And gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. That you wouldn't have to have your faith and hope in things of the world, but hope and faith in things of God, in God. And we cannot have faith in God without having faith in Jesus. We can't have Jesus without having faith in God. In other words, we got to have both or we don't have none at all because they're in 100% total unity. Therefore, we receive one, we receive both. 22. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, Unto unfinished love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart permanently. We've got something to live up to, my friend. If we are live a Christian life as he called us to live, and if we are ministering the gospel as he wants us to, we got to live according to his way, according to his standard, and not our own way. We got to follow him. We got to follow his teaching and his commandments. And not Father man, but Father God, the one, Father the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the way and the only way. 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever, it will never come to the end. Let me tell you, my friend, this word of God will stand forever. When this old world is burning down and melting with heat, it will, God's word will still stand strong and will forever. Let me tell you, my friend, since this book has been written, recorded, Many years ago, when it started in Genesis, everything in the world had been thrown at it to try to dishonor, try to make shipwreck out of it, destroy it, but it cannot be destroyed. It seemed passed through the fire and was never burned. It will never be destroyed. God's word will never be destroyed because he is the living word and God forever will remain and has forever been God and Jesus is God. The Lord Jesus Christ, 
they agree in one. They are one hundred percent total unity. That's why you can't have one without having both. Twenty-four. For all flesh is as grass. That's my flesh included. And all the glory of man is as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof fadeth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you, to the lost and dying world. This same gospel is preached to them over there in those days are preached to us today because it's lived for us. If we hadn't needed it, it would have been lived for us to follow and show us the way because he knew how weak man was. He knew that we needed to have something to follow. Therefore, he left his precious word and he is the living word. We can't follow the word without following him. Therefore, let's strive with everything within us to follow that word. Follow him. Let him lead us on, on through this world of sorrow and troubles and cares. And we cast all our cares and troubles on him because he careth for you. He careth for us. Because we put our faith and trust and love in him, then we can follow him. We'll obey him. Then one day when he says, Come home, my child, we'll have a clear descension into heaven because we made our way clear through the Lord Jesus Christ when he saved us and washed us and made us whole and we chose him as our Savior and he came into our hearts to take up his bow within us. Then he made a way that we could go all the way home but following his word that he left out, he laid out for us the trail that we must follow. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, as again we come to you, Lord, with a thankful heart to thank you for many blessings. And thank you for another day that you have given us to come out and sit down and worship you in spirit and truth. And I pray, O oh Lord, I thank you one more time for giving me this word once again. And Lord, I don't apologize for none of it. Lord, I know because you gave it to us, Lord, that's what you wanted us to bring forth. And I know, Lord, your word will not return void to where you send it. I pray, O oh Lord, it will accomplish this evening. I pray it will touch every heart, every listener. And I pray, O oh Lord, you anoint the hearts of the listeners, that they know they're secure in your hands. Remind them, Lord, that you love them and you still hold them secure in your hands. And, Lord, I pray, O oh Lord, today, for it draws all closer to you and give us a greater hunger to follow you than we have before because yesterday is gone. Tomorrow may never come. But Lord, if tomorrow never comes, we can go home to be with you, to live with you forever in that wonderful and glorious kingdom that you went to prepare a long time ago. Now, Lord, I pray for those that's lost and undone and don't know you as their Savior, Lord, that you talked, you sent your spirit to them before. I pray you send it to them one more time, Lord, and give them another opportunity before they slip out of this world into eternity not knowing you. Because, Lord, I know if we if we go out in eternity not knowing you, then we'll have to raise loss because however we are, we close our eyes at that moment is the way we will open them when we get to there before that great judgment morning, that great judgment seat that's sure to come. And Lord, I pray for those who are sick in body, Lord, inflicted. You reach down, heal, deliver, and touch and set free if it be your loving will. But Lord, if it's not your will for them to be healed, Lord, in this life, I pray you, you uh, let them be a witness to those around them that they can see they can be, you can be sick and still be faithful to you and have these troubles and trials still remain faithful to you and lean on you and not ashamed to confess your love and your glory how you bless and you praise down through the ages, through time, through the years that's gone by, and how, Lord, that you have led us all through that. Now, Lord, I pray for those, Lord, 
that is saved and ready to go, that when that time comes, Lord, we can hear you say, Well done, my good and faithful servant, and we enter into the joys of the Lord and be at peace with the Lord forevermore. And, Lord, we pray, Lord, that then when that time comes, we can bow our head and step aside, Lord Jesus, and give you the praise, the honor, and glory that we know not how to give today because we are still in the flesh. But then, Lord, we'll see you to face to face as you are in the Holy Spirit. We we can talk, we can talk with you, we can praise you, we can thank you for all you've done for us down through the ages. We can thank you for your precious blood, and we can give you praise forevermore, and join in that happy angel band over there, and the many ones that's gone on before that was ready to meet you at their coming home. Now, Lord, I pray, O oh Lord, one more time, that you watch over and guide and lead and direct, and when that time comes, Lord, we can go to sleep in peace knowing we will wake with you. These things we ask in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And amen. And thank you, Father Lord, for your word, for your love, and your mercy.